and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with your weekly MEM Edge show, the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader markets and certainly lots of action last week. So let's waste not a minute and take a look at what we're going to be covering today. As usual, we are going to go ahead and take a look at where the markets closed for the week. It had a little tough period, most certainly. Also taking a look at what I'm calling big movers. The markets overall were certainly better than flat, but there were some stocks that really had outsized returns and then the consequent or the domino effect subsequent to that. And then what's happening in the Dow. The Dow did eke out an outperformance this week, but I'm going to share some of those underlying components because I really feel the stocks in the Dow that are outperforming really encapsulate what's taking place in the broader markets, really. Then from there, news outside of economic data and Fed talk that it was impactful last week as far as moving an entire sector, an entire group as well. So let's begin. I'd like to share with you some of the more impactful news that took place last week. We did see the beginning of this week. China fears that their uh, largest real estate firm, Evergrande, was going to potentially default on their debt, and that really rattled the market. There was fear of a contagion as far as impact. Some were even naming Lehman years ago when they went bankrupt in the uh, with the follow up after that. But it did recede as the week progressed. We also had major news with Fed Federal Reserve Chair Powell, and he came out Wednesday afternoon talking about the very real possibility that interest rates may rise, not a whole lot sooner, but certainly sooner than originally anticipated. Markets took that very much in stride, and it We'll take a look at the broader markets, of course, later. And then weekly jobless claims, they did come in higher. However, a lot of that due to California catching up on dated jobless claims. So we're flat there. Cyclical sectors, by and large, they did outperform growth stocks this week. We'll get into all of that. And then also we did see a spike, if you will, in interest rates as this possibility that the Fed is tempering their monetary policy as that comes into focus. So let's go ahead from here. We want to see where the broader markets are into the close on Friday. And here is that drop that we saw. Now, certainly going into Monday, the markets already were in a bit of a precarious situation as a lot of uncertainty surrounding Fed policy and so on was in the air. But this significant drop did carry into Tuesday. But as those fears of of China's real estate firm defaulting receded, we did see the markets inch slowly higher. And the good news is we closed the week above this 50-day simple moving average. And as many of you may know, that is the line in the sand. For my work, we can go back and look at these other pullbacks that found support at that 50-day and resumed their uptrend. So we are going to be on the lookout for similar dynamics here. The RSI dipping into positive territory, that's a relative strength indicator. And then the stochastics, a faster moving momentum indicator is also in positive territory. So by all accounts, we are on our way. A break above this 21-day simple moving average would be even more convincing, but we're certainly uh, back in good standing with the S&P. From here, we can take a look at those underlying S&P 500 sectors. So they are each listed here with this two-month daily price chart view at it, the RSI. So I want to see where that relative strength is. It's going to be located up here in this upper left quartile relative to your weaker areas down in the lower uh, right. So let's take a look. This was a very big move this week as it relates to the turnaround. We did spot this downtrend reversal earlier in the month, but past this past week's move was quite a bit more decisive, more volume, pushed the outside momentum indicators, certainly the MACD now positive, RSI trending higher. So a very nice move into energy. And we'll get more into that as we move on. From here, another area that generally outperformed, actually uh, consumer discretionary was mostly flat for the week. 
we're catching some of last week's relative outperformance. And a lot of that, of course, Tesla is a big uh, stock in this index, but also a move into some of these uh, leisure related stocks that is all about news out uh, from Biden that the travel ban travelers coming in to the US is going to be lifted. It's anticipated as potentially as early as November as the travelers will need to provide vaccination uh, verification before being allowed in. But this was a great boost for a lot of hotel and travel related stocks. Uh, if we have time, I will get into some of the more interesting looking stocks there. And then from here, we want to take a look at some of the, um, actually, let me go back to this sector view again, because I would be remiss to not point out to you this nice downtrend reversal that took place in financial stocks, breaking back above each of these shorter term simple moving averages, RSI now in positive territory, MACD just now poised to turn positive. And I will share with you the dynamics here as it relates to these financials coming back into favor. And then another area that we can take a quick look at because tech did get hit a little bit harder than the broader markets on this dip, but it too has been able to resume its presence above this 50-day simple moving average. Nice bright, sp uh, bright spots in technology that I'll share with you as well. So from here, we can take a look at some of those sub-industry groupings. I like to look at these relevant ETFs that will in turn provide further insight because of course, we're always on the prowl for those areas of relative outperformance. Where is that strength? That's where you wanna be focused on when you're putting your money to work. So first up here is Brent crude, big uptick this week. The per barrel pricing now landing at $77. A lot of that is production related, Hurricane Ida and other uh, dampening impact as far as production having lift off and then also increased oil demand. So this nice uptick is quite bullish for energy stocks as they will have greater profit margins as the price of oil increases. From here, pardon me, I mentioned to you that bank stocks were, or actually financial stocks were on the upside now into an uptrend. And we can see here with a quick look at the yield on the 10-year treasury. Now, this is subsequent to Powell's indication that they may temp, temp, uh, taper their bond buying, and that in turn will cause interest rates to rise. So we're seeing also a move out of bonds into the stock market. So uptick here in yields on the treasury, and that's going to be one of the primary drivers for bank stocks. From here, next up is KRE, the ETF for regional banking stocks. So we can see this nice move into an uptrend poised to break out of this base with your outside momentum indicators looking quite constructive. So also another area I wanted to point out to you were some of these uh, tech-related software really had this pullback to this 50 day, did not dip below it much at all in this week's pullback, but take a look, it has now resumed its presence above all of its moving averages. Very bullish news. As we move on, I'll share with you one of the stocks that was really uh, relevant in helping software stocks regain their upside momentum. Uh, semiconductor stocks also outperformed for the week and are now up above these moving averages. So constructive within tech are those two areas. And then from here, let's go ahead. And as I mentioned, I want to take a look at the Dow Jones components. So I what I have again is that two month daily price chart view RSI, I want to see where the relative outperformance is in descending. And let's go ahead and update that. First up here, we can see Salesforce. Now, this was added within the last year to the Dow, and it is one of the largest software stocks, very highly regarded. It has had a rather difficult period this year, however. We can see this volatility. There are other names on my MEM Edge report that have been generally um, 
much less volatile and very much outperformers. But what we want to focus on here is this gap up and then subsequent rally. And this is all about management coming out and guiding higher into next year. What these companies do, of course, is have investor days where management presents, talks all about upcoming events and what's going on. So the company has really restructured themselves, not only with management, but with product advancements as well. And Wall Street loved what they heard. So we can see this nice base breakout on this gap up, big volume, nice momentum, black line up through the red, and then your MACD up here in positive territory. So this bullish raising of earnings estimates into 2022 had a very nice effect and impact on other software stocks as well with an eye toward growth prospects remaining strong well into next year. Next up, let's take a look at American Express. Now, this is a stock that had been in a nice lengthy uptrend, but had fallen pretty much out of bed for the last two months. This week, we are seeing a nice downtrend reversal on its way to a 180 base breakout, $180. And a lot of this uh, has to do with the company. Uh, they did have a major Wall Street firm remove their bearish stance, and it really was followed and viewed as quite constructive. We had a nice bottoming impact here as well as the stock is now entering into an uptrend. So nice action there. Uh, McDonald's is also up here in the forefront, a little sloppier, but it did have a base breakout. The company has raised their dividend and also is announcing a share buyback. They've also been seeing nice consistent growth as well. From here, let's take a look at JPM, one of those banking stocks. And this is what you will see as you sort through various banks, nice downtrend reversal base breakout on JP Morgan, one of the uh, more highly regarded banking stocks out there. And then one other name that we can, uh, actually, I have a couple of names. Let's take a look at Chevron. This is not my first pick. There are other, I have four stocks now on my MEM Edge report that have higher growth prospects and are further along in their downtrend reversal. But I feel that Chevron really exemplifies what we're seeing in oil producing stocks. So this particular company, again, nice break above that 50, pretty good volume characteristics. Outside momentum indicators are positive. So by all accounts, Chevron now thrust into a nice uptrend. Let's take a look at a couple of other names here that bear a closer view and are maybe on their way to reversing their downtrend. This is Visa, of course, a well-known company. And the company is we can see potentially reversing its downtrend. Now, Visa got down below this 200-day simple moving average, and this has a little more work to do. A break back above this 234, this 50-day, would really set Visa up for a nice further upside action here. Visa uh, is a stock. They are, of course, a credit uh, payment processor, and they do well, particularly for users of their card in the U.S. that travel overseas. So that travel ban lift was one of the boost. But there are other reasons as well. They are well into crypto and fintech as well. So keep your eye. This one is for your radar, if you will, or keep it on your watch list. One other name potentially trying to reverse here, but we can see that it's had several attempts. This would not be first picked for me but uh, some of you may have an eye toward uh, Boeing. This particular stock, we can see it's potentially reversing its downtrend, a break above this blue 200-day simple moving average would need to take place. We still don't have an upside here on the MACD above zero yet. And the company did come out. They are expecting China to need 7,800 new planes. Now, of course, this is going way out to 2040, but Boeing is anticipating participating in that. Also, Alaska Airlines placed an order, 12 new Boeing 737 MAX planes, and then Delta in uh, possibly as well. So that's a look at the Dow, what the drivers are as far as those stocks that are looking somewhat attractive. So we are going to take a very brief break from here. We have lots more to cover. We'll be right back. 
Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that will help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge Report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And we are back. I mentioned earlier in the show in our agenda that we are going to be taking a look at what I call big movers. These are stocks that were up at least 5%, in several cases up 10% or more in an otherwise myopic market. So first up here is Uber technology. And we can see this big gap up, a couple of things that occurred on that gap up. It did break above each of these shorter term, simple moving average, huge volume. When you see this type of gap up, big volume that breaks above resistance, quite bullish action, and then continued high volume as the stock advanced further into the week. And the reason for this gap up and move higher is because the company came out and they said for this current third quarter, they may finally post a profit. And of course, that's very good news. Last month, the company did predict that they might lose $100 million. So a nice reversal of their outlook here. And it has everything to do, not so much for their rideshare program, but their delivery. Uber Eats and other delivery is really uh, seeing some growth, but more work to do as far as really reversing that downtrend. Another big mover last week that we can take a look at. I always keep my eye on this one. It was a big winner for me back here. Uh, in this period before its break. So uh, kind of on the prowl now, not overly dynamic, but certainly worth noting, they are opening a new hydrogen energy plant in on the West Coast. It's going to be the largest of its kind. So they're doing a lot in the way of activity as far as expanding their exposure. They are the leading maker of hydrogen fuel cells and we can see it broke back above this 50, um, not overly dynamic, but I am on the prowl for move into alternative energy stocks at some point. Ideally, this kind of price action, uh, not quite ready for prime time yet. So let's move on and take a look at another stock that had significant move on news. Again, uh, a down and out name, not quite ready uh, for prime time either, but they did announce earnings gapping up 143% year over year earnings. It is really quite depressed, but this move did push the RSI into positive territory. And I'm pointing this out because when you have a stock that gets this depressed and it gets the RSI into an oversold position, when that RSI eventually makes its way into positive territory, the potential upside historically is greater. Now, of course, we're just up to this 50-day simple moving average easily can act as resistance, but uh, all about positive earnings and a positive outlook for the company going forward. Let's take a look at another stock that had a big move up. This was all about analyst upgrade. This is Monroe, M-N-R-O, and this is an auto um, products company retailer and we can see it's super close if it breaks up above this 200 day simple moving average i like that historically it's had this ability to really in, enter into a nice uptrending period so again we're going to need to see that break up above there 
we are getting nice volume dynamics as the stock is potentially on its way to continue to reverse its downtrend. We can take a look at another stock that is in this industry group, and then I will share with you a company that released their earnings that is also in this automotive parts industry group. Here's Orly, O-R-L-Y, and we can see the stock this week had a nice base breakout, big volume, poised to trade higher. So this is in the same industry group as MNRO. Last up in this group, we can take a look at AutoZone. They did come out with numbers. And this is that domino effect that oftentimes you'll see similar to Salesforce impacting other software stocks. This is AutoZone, uh, AZO. And the company did come out with very strong earnings. And in the process, the stock was bought up. We have now a base breakout into an uptrend. We're still early on in this MACD upward dynamic, so looking constructive there. Also, it did have a big move this week, but that doesn't mean further upside could not very easily take place. Another uh, stock, and you'll see a lot of these bigger movers because I screened among them and they, a lot of them are these downtrend reversal type of plays. This is the Love Sack Company, a big winner during lockdown and beyond as individuals really uh, made their home a lot more inviting, spending more time there. So we can see this nice downtrend reversal, not particularly early here, but the company on September 9th came out with earnings, huge volume. That's your driver continuing to trade higher in a very nice uptrend, 750% year over year earnings growth. And we can see the stock is now in the throes of forming the right side of a base. So also in showing these, it is we can see earnings, analyst upgrades, those same drivers during otherwise very uptrending periods of the market are very much still in place. Uh, Twitter, TWTR, of course, now potentially reversing its downtrend. They came out with news this week that users of Twitter, those that tweet, they can accept Bitcoin tips for their work. And that, of course, got people excited as far as potentially expanding Twitter's user base. We can see outside momentum indicators now positive on the news. Another company that uh, has, let's just take a look at Costco, has really had this big move up. It had pulled back after a very lengthy uptrend. Costco really increased their sub. Uh, Subscribership, yes, it is a subscriber-based um, warehouse service and retailer. We can see that today's move really quite big. They came out with numbers. Their same store sales were up well above estimates, driving the stock up 3%, poised for a nice base breakout, big volume. So they have been able to retain those individuals that joined during the pandemic and then some. So uh, good news there. One other name that we can take a look at, and this was an analyst upgrade due to increased uh, individuals going out gambling. This is IGT, International Game. And we can see that it's now forming the right side of this base. But again, you're going to find the same dynamics are attractive to me in the way of big volume characteristics as the stock takes off, for lack of a better word. We can go back to this May period where it entered a very nice uptrend. Uh, again, that was all about analyst upgrade. So from here, there are other items that I did want to go ahead and share with you. And I talked about that news, the travel ban news. So what I'm going to do is from here, go ahead and take us over to uh, stockcharts.com, of course, their initial interface page, and share with you how you can, when you experience or uncover news such as travel ban into the U.S. being lifted. Let's go ahead into consumer discretionary. From here, we can take a look at that move as far as one week. And this is what I mentioned to you, travel, tourism, uh, recreational services, leisure, and hotels all up here in the forefront as far as leading outperformance of this group. So what we can do from here is go ahead into this travel 
uh, and tourism group. And what I like to do is because oftentimes you'll get these down and out names trying to reverse of more interest is going to be sorting it by this stock charts technical rating. And from here, you will see those names that are setting up. Now, TA is a stock that I've talked about in the past that as actually on this gap up base breakout as the company has um, they provide roadside areas for those people that are traveling to get food and so forth so let's go ahead and take a look at a stock i'm going to go ahead and sort it again by that sctr and we're going to look at some names that are not quite uh, up and out, if you will, they could have more potential upside. So first up, we're going to take a look at Expedia, of course, a major well-known travel booking company. And we can see that it's had this nice break back above this 200-day simple moving average. That in turn pulls up your shorter term simple moving averages, which now once they are in an uptrend, you have the shorter term moving averages crossing above longer term that is a golden cross. And of course the stock at this juncture is a bit extended, but you can see where it's not up and away similar to um, TA or Travel Centers of America. So let's go ahead because unfortunately it does uh, dip down very, very quickly from here as far as groupings. So uh, not quite as interesting, but what I do wanna do is go ahead back to the overall grouping. And then from here, take a look at some of these hotels that really had nice advances this week. Again, looking at that scooter rating. But what I wanna do here too is go ahead and take a look at Hyatt because it, and actually, PLYA is also attractive. So, uh, but this one, again, that SCTR is the stock charts technical rating. The higher the number, the better, but a lot of these higher rated stocks have already had significant advances. This is MTN Vale Resorts, but let's go back to Hyatt Hotels, take a look. And we can see that it is potentially reversing its downtrend. Again, high volume characteristics as the stock breaks back above this 200 day simple moving average. So could be a very interesting move there. Another uh, name that is in that area as far as its stock charts technical rating is Marriott Vacations Worldwide. And this is another one that is very much in the beginning stages of reversing this very lengthy downtrend. So what will occur in these downtrending period, you'll see these uh, reversal attempts being met with resistance at these moving averages. Once we can break above each of these moving averages, pretty decent volume, ideally would like to see more, uh, but we can see how it is now very much on its way to potentially forming the right side of a base as it potentially trends higher. So this kind of exercise that I'm sharing with you can easily be uh, done with any of the industry groupings. This is travel and leisure company, TNL. They do offer travel services in addition to their magazine. And another name that is reversing its downtrend. So uh, again, we can do this very same exercise within energy, within financials. These are areas that are coming into their own, lots of downtrend reversals taking place. So you can also, of course, subscribe to my MEM Edge report. There's a link below four weeks of my bi-weekly report. Last week, I put out four reports. Actually, yes, I did a midweek. I had a Monday alert, a Thursday alert, uh, as well as the weekly Sunday. And you'll get immediate access to those reports and then have this Sunday's broader report delivered directly to you. So go ahead and use that link below. You'll see those energy names that I'm favoring that are really uh, very constructive looking as well as other areas of the broader markets. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Everyone have a great weekend and I'll look for you here next Friday afternoon. Take care. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, 
hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.